Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talking About Birds, the only podcast that, like the Cardinals, needs better development. My name is Nate Heininger, and I am joined this week by my co-host, Ben Samorka. Hey, Nate. That opening bit comes to us via the bird scored from friend of the show, C70. If you have an idea for the opening bit, text or leave us a voicemail at 848-48-BIRDS or join the bird scored. Wow. Uh, Hambone, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, I sound like shit (laughs) today. Yeah, I actually, I actually like, because I'm so used to hearing your voice in one way, Uh you know, for my entire life. This is kind of a nice little change up. So I think it sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. I I don't. I hope it hurts. It does. Every, well, this podcast normally hurts. It's, it's, it it drains me emotionally, physically, um, monetarily. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But. Now it's it's going straight at the money maker, right at my throat. I've got I've got various, I've got lozenges, I've got hot drinks, I've got cold drinks. Wow! I've got everything I could possibly uh, have here to to make this better. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know how long we're gonna make it today, but we're gonna try. What's your hot drink? I have a a hot tea it is a a, ah. a grapefruit um like mint uh adaptogen sort of tea thing going on over here put a, Man. put a little honey in it i've never been more happy that we do this podcast remotely uh than today <laughs> little beverage goblin uh, with your weird little voice and everything I, I, how are you feeling you feeling I okay feel, nate i know uh, your voice but how are you feeling? well thank you for asking i i know you don't care but i appreciate you asking um yeah, I actually feel totally fine. I have mostly felt fine. I so you look not well. Fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, is okay. that is that the whatever I'm dealing with, or is that just my normal appearance? We're both wearing hats, so wow. we've got that going. I guess the hat pod. Yeah, it's a hat pod. Um, it's cold here, and yeah, I don't know. It, I think it's allergies, or I don't know. It, this isn't important. No one cares. But I sound yeah. bad. Um, extra. Gravelly though, I'll try not to uh, lean into the microphone too much. But thanks, yeah. But uh, enough about me. I want to talk about you. Yeah, you, 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 you. Uh, I want to talk about you. <laughs> want to talk about you. Want to talk about me. Me. Hey, wait, Toby Keith, rip. Toby Keith, R.I.P. to a real one. Actually, I don't. I don't <laughs> I'm. I guess I'm sad he's dead. Rip. I'm as as sad I am that like a uh, sure. You know, I. I man, rip in peace. <laughs> I had to scoop a dead squirrel out of my backyard the other <laughs> oh, no. day. I thought it was alive, and I thought he was just being cute, and then I kept getting closer, and it kept not moving, oh, and no. its eyes were unblinking. It was um, staring you down as you were approaching it? Yes, and uh, I had to go get the shovel out of the garage, and he was stiff as a board. Oh, my God, I hated it. I'm surprised you didn't just uh, turn on the grill and, and do what you do. Yeah, uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> I... Uh, like a man, uh-huh. I shoveled it into my garbage. Squealing. <laughs> <laughs> Have Mary do it. Hated it, yeah. though. Didn't, not, my, not my jam. No, no. We, uh, our backyard is a, a, a wildlife wonderland, as Molly likes to set out bird seed and stuff like that. And there's also stray cats, uh, a number of which you've come to live with us at this point. But uh, yeah. it, it is, it's like... 98% of the time it's you look back there and it's like birds are chirping everyone's having a wonderful time we've got a little bird bath uh but like every once in a while it's just uh a bloodbath and there's just yeah, you, something you've horrible you set up a thunderdome scenario for the local wildlife yeah yeah i mean we we've we're feeding the birds which are in turn feeding the cats uh, yeah so it's um, you know, it's nice. It's it's the circle of life, handbone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you've had a busy week, as I understand. I um uh, I have we you know, so Mary and I like to go to see live music quite a bit. Mm-hmm. 
and we just kind of buy tickets in advance to bands that we're excited to see. Wow. Um, Commerce. And it, what? <laughs> Commerce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyways, we've had this week, and I, I wrote three concerts in one week on the outline, but I'm actually now thinking about it. We've had four. We went, uh, if you're, I'm going to include the show that we went to on Friday. Okay. We went to one on Monday night. We went to one last night, and then we have a show this upcoming Friday. And I will tell you, Nate, I like to I like to pick them up and set them down. Sure. I like to uh-huh. uh, pretend I'm maybe a little younger than I actually am. I got out of bed at like nine oh five this morning and started work at nine oh six. It is like <laughs> it's wearing me down. Um, we were at the punk rock show. Wow. last night, and kids were doing crowd surfing. Yeah, kids were doing body slamming, and 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 they were getting crazy in the pit and everything uh-huh. like that. And I just had this moment where I'm kind of standing in the back, like slowly sipping on a Modelo, where I felt a thousand years old yeah. all of a sudden. Um, and I have to like find energy over the next day or so and do it all again on Friday night. Um, and uh, yeah, I've just I've I've met my mortality mm. over this past few days, and it's really not it's not sitting well. I'm not digging it. Maybe. Probably doesn't help that all those rude teens keep picking you up by your ankles and and shaking out all your lunch money. <laughs> I was thinking there was like this guy who was trying to get people to crowd surf. And I was like, there's just, they, I could never do it. I would squish the people below me. Like these little teeny boppers yeah. would flatten like a pancake <laughs> under my large white ass. Yeah. You go up there to, to cr- uh, crowd surf and, every, and it just parts and you just <laughs> face plant. It would be on the news. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. But uh, uh, so, so what was the, what's the favorite show you saw? Um, wow. What a question. Uh, so I'll say so far it's been, I got one more on Friday. Okay. I've seen Caribou on Friday. I'd say I saw Modest Mouse, who is a, a favorite of yeah. mine. They played all of their record. Good news for people who love bad news. And that was quite a treat. Yeah. Cause a lot of those songs I had not seen them play in the past, but was uh, it, that's, was that, that's the standout. So yeah, that's one of my favorite bands of all time. As you know, was this, um, did they market the tour as a good news tour or did they just happen to play all the songs uh yeah that it's their anniversary they were saying it's like a it was a birthday party for their record so they came out did the horn intro from the record and then played the whole record did an intermission then played a bunch of their other songs uh it was nice lots of fun if you're into that kind of thing yeah somehow i missed that they have uh, a lot of a lot of hat wearers a a lot of uh, toque wearers at that concert let me tell you wow wow um, yeah, it's like every band is doing that now. I mean, I just went to Chicago two weeks ago uh, to see a. Well, I think bands have always been doing that. We're just now at the we're age at the, where the records we grew <laughs> up with are like point. having 10 and 20 that's year a, anniversaries. It, that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, it just seems yeah. like I'm seeing more of it where even not even uh, particularly large bands are doing tours where they just play the album front to back. But yeah, it, it might be. Just I, something as an heard. album guy, I love it because yeah. I want to hear all the. I want to hear every song. It's I, I I super dig it, especially a record that is as you know important to me yeah. as that. So yeah, yeah, that was that was the best. And then uh, I'll shout out Michelle, which is a little pop group from Brooklyn. Yeah, like they Michelle. were also great. And then last night I saw Hockey Dad, um, which is a really fun mm-hmm. uh, punk band from Australia. So recommend all of them. All great shows, but Modest Mouse is the winner. And then Caribou, looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to dance my little face off, assuming I have energy. Um, maybe I'll find some. Are you going to go to Weird Owl at Red Rocks next summer? Uh, we haven't d- bought tickets or anything like that, but it is on the list. Yeah. Yes. I've never, or actually, the first concert I ever went to in my life was Weird Owl at Six Flags St. Louis um, I, with my neighbor, Paul Brusati. Shout out, Paul Brusati. I was there too. Were you? There, I, were we there together? Well, I don't know. I I assume so. Um, but maybe not. Maybe we were just there separately. But I I, I don't. I remember going there with Paul Brusati. Shout wow. out, Paul. Shout out, Paul. I don't remember you being there. Um. Yeah. I mean, I he. It might have been different shows also. Uh. But yeah. I absolutely saw Weird Al at Six Flags in like. I mean, ninety. You get to ride the Screaming Eagle and, and then go see the concert of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I haven't. Have you been to a um. Like an, a, a, an amusement park recently? Have you rode a roller coaster recently? No, I have been threatening my lovely wife with a trip to Cedar yeah. Point. I think we're going to try to do it next year because I'm an adult now and I could just go to a, a theme park on my own and pay for <laughs> the stuff on my own. Yeah. Um, and they have new rides there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you remember, I used to live fairly close to Cedar Point and it has been a long yeah. time since then. Uh, 
So no, but I want to go. We have a theme park. We have a couple of theme parks in Denver, but they're kind of sketchy. Yeah. Um, Roller coaster just shoots off the top. <laughs> I mean, well, there's one called Lakeside, and like the the joke is that it is just a front for money. I've never seen the actual roller coaster mm-hmm. run, um, uh, money laundering. Um, but no, I'm I, okay. I'm going to call it right now. Next, uh, maybe wow. in the spring, talking about Bird's Trip to Cedar Point, uh, Cedar Point, and uh, I'll invite everybody, yeah. and we'll have a great time. I would love to go to Cedar Point again. I went when I was like 17 or 18, and at the time. They had the fastest roller coaster in the world. I think that is now somewhere in Tokyo or Japan, but uh, it was it was yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, I know. I they like upgraded Top Thrill Dragster, so now it's like bigger, taller, faster, stronger. Wow. Um, real, but I haven't, real Nate Heidinger haven't situation. <laughs> wow. That yeah, that's you. Yep, that's you, buddy. Whatever you say, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> I feel that way. Yeah, you look great. You sound great. <laughs> You say the things. It's it's all coming up. Nady H today. Uh, you're talking about getting old, though. I do worry about roller coasters. I like the wooden ones. I like them janky, um, but I'm afraid I'll need emergency medical attention after something like the boss at Six Flags. Yeah. Well, you know what? We go up to Cedar Point. You ride roller coasters for a day or two, uh, and then you deal with the fallout after. Yeah. You'll be, you know, you, you can handle Just it for a day or two. Drown myself in Lake Michigan. That would be dope for yeah. you, I think. Just fill my pocket with rocks and walk in. Virginia Woolf <laughs> You've style. You've always said you wanted a water funeral. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the Cardinals. Um, yeah. Here we are. Slow week in baseball today. I'm not going to – usually I like to say it's a packed show. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a pretty It's a pretty slow week in the baseball world in general yes. right now. Yeah, I think uh, this is the time where everybody's relaxing a little bit. we got some news here and there. We've got some things to talk about. But the offseason yeah. hasn't really kicked off uh, yet. I think the only real, like, you know, I think the Juan Soto sweepstakes has begun. We're getting, uh, we're getting news of meetings and things like that. But for the most part, I think everyone's just chilling right now. But uh, yeah, but we still have some Cardinal stuff to talk about. What do you want to start with? Yeah, I want to start with a conversation that uh, Mo had with a, a group of reporters at the GM meetings that is going on. Um, And I'm going to read a quote from him. He said, our team is not going to look all that different. Um, He's referencing the 2025 team. As we navigate the next uh, four to eight weeks, it is going to be how can we better our club or how can we better our future? What does that look like? We're going to find pathways to give our younger players a chance to play and see what they can do. And... This it's kind of a non comment, but it's also like it's we don't really have much to go on right now. And yeah. I guess I'm asking you and I'm asking everybody, what the hell does this mean? Is the plan to readjust or is the plan to compete? Yeah. Like, because the thing is, is there are a lot of free agents available. Are the Cardinals going to be in the mix at all? Or is all he talking about as far as improving the team? is getting increased performances from the young people that you already have as part of the club right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I think he's saying it's not going to look that much different. So he's saying it now, meaning after the loss of Goldschmidt, Gibson, Lynn, all you know, Kittredge, all these guys, they were major parts of 2024. So he's saying as the is a way as the way I read it is yeah. the team as it is right now is not going to look much different into 2025. Um, that may or may not end up being true. I assume he's saying that because he doesn't know, is he going to trade uh, Wilson Contreras? Is he going to trade Sonny Gray? Is he going to trade Ryan Helsley? We probably have an answer on Wilson Contreras, but you never know. Um, and Helsley ha- or uh, Gray has the no trade clause, et cetera. So you could see why he would say, you know, there may not be any major moves, but even with, and even with the loss of just those guys, that opens up a uh, pretty considerable playing time, at least in like the rotation and things like right. that. So I, I think it's kind of, it is kind of a nothing comment. He's hedging his bets. It's the classic Mazalak thing where he, you know, he just sort of wish goes back and forth and doesn't really say anything, kind of gives you a hint and it could all be a smoke screen or it could be exactly what's going to happen. Um, I, I, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. 
So we've talked about the trades that we think make sense. Uh, probably moving on from Helsley, uh, Jojo Romero. I've seen John King thrown out there yeah. as a possible trade candidate. Um, and then, you know, the, the obviously the, the losses. Is there any other move that you would really want to see the Cardinals do to open up playing time for that young player? Or are you kind of happy going into 2025 giving – Jordan Walker, Lars Newbar, Alec Burleson, obviously Mason Wynn, Nolan Gorman. Do you just want to give those guys 500 at bats and consider that the goal of the year? Yeah. Um, I don't think we can. It, w- there's not enough at bats to just say they're all going to get 500. I, I still wonder what the plan for center field is. Are we going with Siani and just letting it ride and seeing what we've got? Are they going to say, that was fun, he's good defense, but the offensive upside of Victor Scott, too, is far better. Like, you kind of, I, I don't want to, I don't want him to just rotate all these guys around and we end up with another season of everybody getting 400 at bats and we're not really sure what any of them are. Obviously, you want Jordan Walker to get as many at bats as possible. I feel like Burleson has pretty well established himself as a major league uh, offensive player, at least. And I feel like we're kind of in the same spot as last year where it's just like there's all these question marks, not enough space to go around. And I would personally love to see a couple of these guys get packaged together and moved simply to make space and go in with some clarity on 2025. And hopefully it breaks well and these guys mature and we have a better sense of what our competitive team will look like in 2026. But if not, at least you have a better idea of where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, package a Alec Burleson and an Yvonne Herrera to go get some young lottery ticket sure. or a starting pitcher that you can maybe dream on a little bit. Um, but you have to imagine that you can not only is there desire to move those guys because of what you're talking about, opening up the playing time, opening up space, um, pre-planning for the Jimmy Crooks, uh, but also like those guys have offensive upside. Yeah. Uh, Ivan Herrera has offensive and defensive upside. There are lots of teams out there that would kill for bats. Um, and those guys are cheap, cost controlled. And, you know, obviously they are not established, established because they've only been in the league for so long. Um, but I think it makes a lot of sense. And I kind of am feeling like they have to do something yeah. like this. Cause like you said, I, I, I think that it's really easy for this stupid kind of comment and thought process to get you into a year of 2025 that looks exactly like 2024, and we know the same. Where we know just as much. Yeah. Um. Uh, th- maybe the one learning being that oh, I think Wilson Contreras can actually play first base. Right. Um. And I kind of already assume he'll figure it out. I'm not even. That's, yeah. I, there's going to be some growing pains, but it's not going to be like watching Matt Carpenter learn first base, <laughs> where he's getting like handcuffed by throws from the second base yeah. all the time and all that. So, yeah, I I I am worried that they're not going to do enough because this has been their it's just how it's way been about going. going about business yeah. for the longest time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also uh, increasingly a believer in JJ Weatherholt as a future fixture of this team. And I know yeah. he was just drafted last year, um, but he's about as mature a draft pick as you can get. Um, and it seemed to immediately transfer at the pro level. And what I would absolutely love is for them not to wait for someone to fail their way out of the league and it just to be a collapse that we finally call up J.J. Weatherhold at some point and just say, we're rebuilding. We have created space for a guy that we believe is a future part of this team and maximize the value. Maybe a Brendan Donovan, um, you know, he would fit on any team. I would love him as a Cardinal, but – maybe he's what you need to throw in to, to secure a good return in a trade package somewhere. I, so I, I, yes, I like, I like generally what you are saying, but I think unfortunately the best path for clearing space for a player like JJ Weatherholt, it's specific to JJ Weatherholt is moving on from Nolan Arenado. Yeah. And that conversation has gotten a little bit of steam it has. this week. And, of course, we are in the middle of November, so people are writing articles, so take it with the biggest grain of salt you can possibly find. But there's been conversations about him 
talking to John Denton, saying that he really wants to win a championship. How patient is he going to be? And if a team like the New York Yankees, which he's been connected to, who were literally just in the World Series one minute ago, if they are trying to bring in a Nolan Arenado, it would be, it, to me, it would make a lot of sense for him to waive his no trade clause. Yeah. That opens up a lot of things. You, you you move Nolan Gorman or Jordan Walker over to third base. You have J.J. Uh, Weatherholt take over second base at some time uh, in 2025, whenever that makes sense. Then, of course, you still have to figure out the Brendan Donovan, which I think trading him is... I think you could get a lot back for him. I also think Brendan Donovan's a really good player. Yeah. Um, and moving away from him scares me. Right. Um, especially, I think he has showed his defensive value at third base and second base. Um, but you can only have so many of these guys on a baseball team. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it would be like Brendan Donovan is a tricky one because he has proven himself already twice as a th- as a three plus Fangraphs WAR player, and that's that. Like, if JJ Weatherholt is a three WAR player, you're like, hell yeah, that that's a that's a great return so you don't want to trade a guy just to make space for a guy who's exactly him except for that you have two of them and so you have excess value and right you it maybe does make sense to trade him i'm less um bullish on either gorman or walker at third base neither of them have done it for quite a while and i'd be worried about walker at you know every, there's been so much time spent on making him a right fielder i i worry about a guy of his size being a long-term successful third baseman and if he doesn't adapt quickly that uh that's going to show a lot faster than it's going to show in right field if that makes sense yeah Um, gorman i you know i know he was a third baseman coming up but it's been a long time for him too and he's turned himself into an okay second baseman but i worry about him at third too it would make more sense to me if we're going to bring, you know, move Donovan over to third, and keep Walker and right, and maybe Gorman is someone. That, you know, it's kind of a, it's obviously a sell low, but Gorman is maybe someone you move and you hope for. Uh, maybe he goes over to the Yankees with Arenado uh. and you increase the package. I don't want to trade Gorman. I see your face. I love Gorman too, but what I mean, it's it's all these guys. Gorman is like Newt Bar, where it's like we know what he can be. And we get flashes of it, but at some point, what do you do? You've got to move on. I I do not think it is time to move yeah. on from Nolan Gorman. I, I, I would much rather trade a Brendan Donovan because at least the value yeah. is clear there and you will yeah. get back something um, that, that helps the team. I think if you trade Nolan Gorman this offseason or, or this season, you're getting nothing uh-huh. um, and you're giving up a lot of potential. Yeah. Um, and he had a, a down year, uh, call it a sophomore slump, call it a, you know, there might be a lot of things wrong. He might figure it out. He might not figure yeah. it out. But moving on from him at this point, I think would be a total gut punch. And uh, I don't, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't know. No, thank you. I, I, I think I agree. I'm just thinking about, you know, space and, and what does it look like if Gorman struggles again in spring track? I guess you just keep him at AAA and just. Hopefully he turns it around and you, you readdress that when it when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I also I'm like curious to see if he could play third base. Like obviously Nolan Gorman can't go to the outfield. He can't. Yeah. That's just not in his game. Um, I, I wouldn't think at least. So him being able to move over to third base is what what he came up throwing it. He has the arm. Um it'd be interesting to me. I do think that Brendan Donovan would be a better third baseman than him, like immediately today. Um but yeah, yeah, it's. I think it's all worth a conversation, and I think it's. While I do not really want the Cardinals to move on from Nolan Arenado no. because of all the reasons we talked about, and because I would rather watch good players play baseball than bad players play baseball, but it's the most obvious, and he seems the most likely to waive that no trade clause because I don't think he wants to wait around anymore. Yeah, um, it was part of why he came to St. Louis, why he left the Rockies. I mean, I know. There was a lot going on then, and the Rockies were a particularly disastrous. Well, I mean, look at where they are now. Yeah. You would still rather be on the Cardinals Absolutely. than the Rockies. Yeah, um, and he, losing a hundred games a year. And he had personal relationships with people on the Cardinals, but 
those are all gone now. If you think about it was Wainwright and Goldschmidt were really what drove him here. Hey, Carpenter might be coming back though. You never know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I know you can't wait for that. That's your favorite I'm calling thing. for it. Uh, yeah. What kind of return do you think the Cardinals could get from the Yankees for Arenado? I, I don't think it's going to be much. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be much at all. I think that the Yankees are going to be playing in the free agent waters this year. And I think if you want to get anything for Nolan Arenado, you're going to have to eat a large chunk of that salary. Um, and that salary, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, I guess, how you look at it. It's just kind of a sunk cost right now, yeah. right? You're going to be paying him $36 million or so for a year, which you do not expect to compete. So does it matter if you're doing that for, for the, if you're paying 25 of that 36 million for him to play with the Yankees when it's already a year that you don't expect to compete? And then maybe, you know, it depends on how the deal kind of unfolds after that. Um, and I don't know. It's obviously going to be how the Cardinals look at it and how their financial situation turns out and everything like that. But I would be willing to do that to get anything of substance back. That being said, it's not like the Yankees have this stacked minor league yeah. system that you can just pilfer right now. Um, so I think they really you know, don't. I think that that's really complicated. Their their um, system is pretty top heavy with some high end guys at the very top, and then it falls off pretty quickly. Like, like you're not going to get Spencer Jones right. for Dude. Nolan Arenado. How fun would that be? That would be a lot of fun. Now, maybe if you eat the entire contract, if you pay, I think he's got 80-something, $86 million. If the Cardinals are like, we'll just pay all of that, maybe you get a Spencer Jones in return because they're getting a free Arenado. But uh, the Cardinals wouldn't do that. Yeah. And, you know, it'd be a weird scenario. But I, I do think there, there, there is some efficacy to this happening because you look at, you know, we're talking about Willie Adamas. Uh, I was reading today, he is considering moving to third base for the Mets, and it is rumored that he has $160 million on on the uh, uh, block right now that he is considering. So if you're the Yankees, you're thinking, okay, well, Arenado is maybe not as good as Willie Adamas right now, but he's not $160 million. Yeah. I can just go get him for a fixed cost, and we can let it ride from there. Like, I think this trade makes more and more sense when we kind of looked at it in Albatross when you really look at how expensive some of these guys might be, yeah. getting an Arenado might make more sense. Well, and you could see it fitting a narrative for the Yankees who continue to get roasted for their defense in the national well, media. So they say, yes. okay, we hear it. We're going to go and get literally one of the best defenders in baseball of, of, of all, all time. time. And he's going to come in and he's, you know, he's going to whip everyone into shape or something like that. Now, yeah. now we all know he's like too frenetic and awkward apparently to like actually do any of that seemingly, but you can see how the, the, the yeah. Yankees would um, and, pitch it that way. And the Yankees have an opening at first base too. What if they bring in Arenado and Goldie? And Goldie oh my God. Plug a couple of holes. No, <laughs> no, I hate it. I, 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 and then what if they win? Uh, that would be the really hard I, part. Man, I had thought about those two individually. I had not thought. Yeah. I had not actually connected it as if they have Goldie and Arenado. I, I'm not saying it's likely, but I do think that there was a very yeah. clear scenario <laughs> yes. where the Yankees get both of them, and it makes sense for their team. I think Goldschmidt, like my the prediction of Goldschmidt to the Yankees, is the most likely outcome for Goldschmidt in my mind. So yeah. Uh, oh man, that hurts. I, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that a lot. <laughs> and get you know who wouldn't hate it is Goldie and Arenado. Oh, sure. They would be like, "Thank God, yeah, we're back together." Um, you know, and we got a cast of of Aaron Judge and Juan Soto maybe. and Jazz Chisholm to yeah. to boost us up, and we're we're gonna go win. Yeah, maybe. Um, I also wonder if the Yankees might try to trade for someone like Luis Robert, who uh, is is likely available for the right price, and maybe yeah. Spencer Jones would be worth it for something like that. Yeah, um, that would be really bad for Spencer Jones. But I think that yeah. that would make a lot of sense. I kind of think that they are going to put Jazz Chisholm in center field next year yeah. and move, uh, uh, get a third baseman, put Jazz in center, and move Judge back to a corner um, and, and kind of roll it that way. But we'll see. They got Jazz, I think, for two more years. So they'll, they, I, I don't think they'll use him at third base is, is I guess, really what I'm yeah. trying to say. Well, they also have Jason Dominguez, who if the Cardinals could just – unload everybody for Jason Dominguez, I would, I mean, I think that dude's going to be legit. Yeah. The Martian. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be fun too. Why not? What, why not? Why not, man? Why, you know, let's just do the force trade button on MLB the show and say, uh, okay, Gorman, uh, Donovan, 
Arenado for Jason Dominguez. All Bingo right. Bango. Um, and that Will doesn't Warren. really fix our outfield log, log jam, but no, but now we, uh, yeah, Will Warren could be a guy yeah. or he could be a, a middle reliever, yeah. but yeah, the Yankees, they're, 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 they're minor leagues are not totally inept. They're just not as exciting as, as some other teams. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, but it, the, to circle back to the beginning of this, it certainly seems like, uh, Mazalak is shopping Arenado. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing, obviously, I have no, no reporting. There's no journalistic integrity here at all. I'm guessing that Arenado is like, Mo, if you get me on a winner, that on a deal that makes sense, that would be great. Um, I'll stick around also. Um, I'm also wondering, like, how much are they internally talking about 2026? Are they, like, Sonny Gray said in an interview with Katie Wu, I, I'm happy to be here. I want to be here. I'm fine with being the the tutor for these young starting pitchers in 2025. And then let's get him in 2026. I wonder what that internal conversation is like of, yeah. is it, are they speaking confidently? Like, we'll take, we're going to take a year off. We're going to do this Bloom thing. And then we're going to push back in because we think these young guys are good. Or is it murky and, and confusing? Because I could also see Arenado say, like, he, I think he likes it here generally. Yeah. If the if he believe I, he believes in Nude, I think he believes in Walker. He believes in these win these young guys. You know, being the old uh, the old all star on a team full of young uh, up and comers isn't the worst thing of all. No, time. think about Freddie Freeman. Um, you know, everyone was feeling so bad for him. Not that it was not that long ago when we were looking at the Braves, going, "Oh man, poor Freddie Freeman." Right. And then yeah. two years later, the Braves are a powerhouse. And then the next year he's gone, but still, you right. know, there, there, there can be, uh, you know, legacy building and all that for, for being a guy who sort of is the, is the, um, you know, pillar through the rebuild. Yeah. Um, and, and if Heim Bloom is talking to Arenado, like, Hey, I'm confident we can turn this around. Maybe, maybe that changes the flavor yeah. of the conversation and what their relationship is like and everything like that. I have no idea, but yeah, because I, I think Arenado has built up enough goodwill here in St. Louis that even if he has another middling year, I think everyone's still going to love him. And he's just, he's a fan favorite. And I think rightfully so. We all love Arenado. I, I do wonder if he, he would have any worries about uh, going to a Yankees or something like that and being mediocre and getting blasted by the, by the media. I don't know. I, I mean, they boo Aaron judge in New they York. Do. So your Aaron is going to get booed yeah. if he goes there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and to your point though, I, I suspect that they are talking about competitive window for 2026 because they're even kind of talking about it for 2025. The Cardinals refuse to even say 2025 is going to be, a losing year. I do wonder yeah. if they're having more candid conversations with the players behind the scenes. I would certainly hope so. It makes sense yeah. uh, well, to the fan base to give this sort of like, hurrah, we're, we're never going to lose yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but I, I'm sure that the players have at least some more insight. Yeah, and I bet like there's, you know, if you look at it through those John Moselock 99th percentile glasses that he likes to wear, at least when speaking to the media, the central is still not that good. Yeah, I do expect the Cubs to make a splash. I do expect the Reds to make a splash um, on the free agent market, but the central still isn't that good. And I understand how if you are a Cardinals insider or you're a Cardinals fan or if you are a Cardinals player, if you're a Mason win, you can look at this team and say like, we're going to get better. Yeah. I'm really good right now. Jordan Walker's only going to get better. New bar, Yvonne Herrera, Brendan Don, like all these guys are only going to get better. And the, the central is weak and we're going to surprise everybody. Uh, Palante has got a new screwball sure. and you know, he's, he's about to elevate. Like I could see it's not total like, banana totally bananas for them to think that way i don't think it's going to happen <laughs> i don't think the, the projections are going to say that i don't yeah. think the, the money's going to say yeah. that but i understand where they're coming from and there is an argument and i could talk myself into it over a long enough period of time like we'll see yeah i guess yeah i think if you were picking right now uh if you were like if you're like what nl central team am i going to root for in 2025 i think you're probably picking the cardinals fourth um, um, yeah. And you may even choose the pirates over the Cardinals. I was just going to say, I mean, Skeens and Jones and, all year. Yeah. Uh, if they bring any offensive help, yeah. um, 
that that could go a long way for them. Um, yeah, I think the Reds are a huge mystery, but I think they're going to spend money. And I, I think I would not be surprised if the Cubs actually shock everyone and go get a Soto or or somebody super high level yeah. like that to to kind of reestablish their their place in the central. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's move on. Uh, yeah. There's been some we've been following the story uh, for for as long as it's really been developing and, and we're starting to get starting to see a clearer picture, if you will, as to what the Cardinals broadcast uh, is that, situation is going to look like. You are so happy with yourself. <laughs> Please you, explain my, my perfect transition. <laughs> what the <laughs> Uh, the Cardinals are going to keep Diamond Sports as their TV home. Uh, they are also going to grant streaming rights within the market. Uh, the Cardinals are taking a pay reduction of 25% in 2025, uh, which means so their deal is at, uh, somewhere around $77 million normally. Uh, they're going to be making about $56 million from their streaming and TV rights uh, in 2025. Their games will be available in market in a direct to custom uh, consumer streaming product, uh, the Cardinals uh, station was recently renamed FanDuel Sports Network Midwest. Really wow. rolls off yeah. the tongue. I actually noticed this a couple of weeks ago because the app on my Apple TV updated itself to FanDuel Sports. Um, so that's happening. We're no longer going to be watching Bally Sports. Uh, and the pricing for the streaming was not announced in this uh, statement. Uh, my guess is it's going to be either it's totally own, own thing where it's like 20 bucks a month, or they're going to do it the Rockies way where you can just tack on an extra bill to your MLB.tv. But because they're talking about the applica- the app, um, the, the, uh, the separate streaming network, everything like that, I think it's going to be for you in-market people, I'm guessing 20 bucks a month, and you could stream every Cardinals game. I'll say from my point of view, I, I think if it's if it's around that price point, I think this is great. I think yeah. it's a no brainer. MLB should be going this way. Every sport should be going this way. Um, I'd be curious to hear from listeners if they think just throwing out that twenty twenty five bucks if that's something that they would be willing to pay for. Um, but I think it's good news. Um, I am of the opinion of, of uh, that it is good news, um, and I think the Cardinals being more viewable even though the product might be worse in 2025 <laughs> is good. Yeah. No, I think this is great. Um, we've been pretty concerned about this uh, for a while and really the number one frustration a lot of us have had with the league and access to sports is the um, is the blackout situation and just how frustrating and stupid that feels. And then not even including all the people who maybe this doesn't happen as much to St. Louis Cardinal fans, but it does a little bit where you're like barely in a market and that's considered and you get blacked out or those people who live in like Ohio who are technically covered by like four different teams and they're right. blacked out from everything. It's a total mess. I understand how they got themselves in this situation. It's legacy deals trying to deal with modern situations and technology, but it has been a major issue. And I think that this is a, it, this is the solution. Keep it on basic TV for the people who still subscribe to that and then give the rest of us a direct-to-consumer platform that I can pay for directly and not have to deal with all the shit that I do right now. Um, I mean, I'm still going to keep my VPN and all that because, you know, internet privacy is important, but I will be glad to not have to fiddle with shit all the time to get to watch Cardinal Baseball. So I am I, I think this is great. And yeah, 2025, 20, I think that's reasonable. It's a daily product. And um, you know, I'm I, I, I think that's a fair price. How do you feel about the new network name? <laughs> it's horrible. FanDuel Sports Network Midwest. I mean, they're all bad. You know, like Bali Sports, it just it's mon- it was mundane enough that it didn't yeah. it, it meant nothing, you know, and so FanDuel it's it sounds worse, but they're all the same. It's all just it's all trash. I am I am not a sports better yeah, at all. Me I, I've actually other than with like you or, or or friends, I've never made like an official yeah. sports bet on a sports betting app or website. 
Um, so I am there, you know, there, there's part of me that is annoyed by this proliferation of everything that is sports to, mm-hmm. to fan duel or to bet three, six, five right. with Aaron Paul and that weird green room he hangs out in to, to make his sports bets and all the shit that is constantly everywhere. And I guess this is just more of it. And, you know, baseball is going that direction. I know that there's conversations about live sports betting happening inside ballparks in certain places. Um, yeah, no, I'm the, I'm yeah. the same. I'm the exact same way. I've, I, I'll do little, uh, prop bets with friends. You and I've done these. Yeah. We'll do this with our friends who wins the home run derby, uh, over under a little stuff like that. Five bucks on who wins the central little things like that with friends. It's mostly that I'd just like to compete with my friends, but I've also never, uh, participated in online. Yeah. On, I don't, I've never downloaded an app, never done any of it. And I try not to, you've never downloaded an app. I've never downloaded a single app before. Holy um, shit. I try not to be too curmudgeonly about it, you know, because I know a lot of people enjoy it and it can be a lot of fun if you do it responsibly. Um, I, I do have broader, like socioeconomic concerns about this and, and what it says about like money and people's need to, uh, you know, th- there's a lot of people who use this as an attempt to to hit it big and get out of a situation, and and that's all horror, and it preys on that. And I could soapbox for a while, and I I, uh, I I worry about that, but um, it is pretty annoying that now you just yeah. have to, even if you don't if you don't want to participate in it at all, you still have to be like, oh, turn on the FanDuel network so I can watch the Cardinals. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild, um, but. Without being too grouchy about yeah. it, uh, it is good that our lords and saviors at FanDuel uh-huh. are opening up and everybody can watch these things. This podcast is, of course, to brought it. to you by FanDuel. Uh, no, we're if not. You have a pro- we're not getting a dollar from If you them. have a problem, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Um, <laughs> uh, you know it's a good product right. when every single commercial has to be followed up with government-required uh, yeah. language. Yeah, it's it's not like cigarettes or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. It's totally healthy for you. There's no issue. And actually, I, I do want to double down on this. I don't really care if you want to do it sure. yourself. That go crazy for it. Yeah. Uh, I I am just not a gambler at all. Um, I it's just not my. I like my money. I, don't know, I think for me, wearing that hat was a real gamble. Um, I'll make fashion gambles <laughs> all the time, and they usually pay off. Wow. Um. I like this hat, Nathan. Mm. Uh, all right, let's talk. We got a little bit of player news, and then I want to talk about another rumor. And then uh, Nate and I we're going to talk about uh, after the break. Do a little free agent prediction game that I think is going to be fun. But uh, before we get there, I did want to talk about Thomas Sajasi. Mm. Uh, he has been selected to the Arizona Fall League All Stars game. We've been kind of tracking his performance all month. He's absolutely killed it. He ended it with a 391 average and an 1118 OPS. Um, you know, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The performance was absolutely crazy. Uh, he never cooled down. It's a short amount of time. Yeah. He happened to get hot, but it's against high level uh, pitching um, at the end of the season when everybody's tired. And I really think that this is step one to JC getting a position on the 26th man next year and and maybe filling that utility role. Maybe Donnie gets a permanent position and JC is your new middle infield outfield bench off the bat. But he really seems to have checked every box. And I think this performance is just the cherry on top of of a great couple of years he's had in the Cardinals organization. Yeah. Is he that guy or is he just a guy? I, right. I I he's another big question mark. And uh it certainly seems we've said this before, he's done enough to prove that he's ready to get playing time at the major league level. They gave it to him at the end of the year. It was very small. Yeah. There were some very high level. There were some highlights and some lowlights in his his small time, but I think he should be playing. He should probably be playing every day if you're a team that's developing. Uh, now, where do they find those at bats? That's a big question. We we right. just talked about Brendan Donovan and JJ Weatherholt and all of that. So, how do you get another guy that is almost the exact same profile uh, in, in in on this team? I don't know. It begs the question, what are the Cardinals doing? What are the Cardinals why, doing? Why have we found ourselves here? Well, it's the same problem they've always had. It's a surplus 
of league average to above, slightly above league average players with upside to, uh, you know, highly above league average players. Uh, And it's really difficult to manage. They get themselves there too by an unwillingness or an inability to just make a call on a player and either lock them in or move them. And we see it over and over and over and over again. Maybe Heimbloom will be different. Yeah. Um, I hope so. But uh, did you see Cesar Prieto hit a uh, double in the uh, Dominican series game the other day? Uh, no, I missed that. It's another guy yeah. that is, what What do you do with a Cesar Prieto? Um, all right. The last thing I want to talk about, uh, this was uh, written about. Um, and again, we are in the doldrums right now, so don't yell at me. Uh, but Max Scherzer has announced that he has decided that he would like to play another season in 2025. The Cardinals were mentioned among the Detroit Tigers and Washington Nas- Nationals as best fits to sign him this winter. Does it make sense, Nate? Does this get people through the gates? Does Max Scherzer finally being a Cardinal sell, get you to 3 million ticket sales? Um, and if the season goes the way that we all think it's going to go, do you send out Max Scherzer to uh x club that is you know trying to win a championship um does it make any sense no uh the only way it makes sense is exactly what you sort of ended that on is you're you're buying him for hopefully 12 to 15 good starts and then you and you're treating him with kid gloves and then you're trading him july 31st for something to a competitive team um and he has to know that's what any low market or not low market uh any middling to bad team is hoping for out of him and i wonder if that's what he wants too he might like that he might yeah. want that um but i don't know the cardinals have not ever done that though they haven't really been in this sort of situation before they obviously didn't want to try that with someone like Kyle Gibson i'd be really surprised if during all this talk about cutting money and giving playing time to young kids you go and get yet another almost 40 year old pitcher. Now Max Scherzer is very different than Kyle Gibson yeah. and Lance Lynn and Sonny, even Sonny Gray. Like it's, he's a future hall of famer, first ballot, very, very different, but still it's, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think I mostly agree with everything you said, man. Oh man. Oh sure. I would love for the prophecy to come true and for him to play for the Cardinals, even for half a season, different colored eyes. Um, but uh, I, I I think I agree with you. Um, all right, that's all the Cardinals news I have right now. All right, so uh, like Ben said, we're going to talk about the the sort of the stars of the off season here. But before we do, we want to remind everyone that this show is listener supported on Patreon, patreoncom slash birds. If you want to show your appreciation for the time for the throat killing effort that we put into this show every single week, wow. uh, if you've made it this far into this episode. Um, and you want to show your support, check it out. Patreon.com slash talking about birds. Uh, we've got different subscriber levels, but, but subscribers at any level get access to our private discord server. It's the bird scored tweet, tweet. We're tracking all the news in there, having discussions. Uh, it's a great place to go to get away from the social media, especially if you're trying to escape particular social media platforms right now. Um, you know, come and hang out with us on the bird scored. It's a great place. Uh, friendly and responsive. So patreon.com slash talking about birds. We'd also love it if you tell your friends. Uh, whether you like it or not, you might be around a lot of your family over the next couple weeks and friends. So maybe it's a good time to tell them about your favorite Cardinal podcast. And after you tell them about that, you can tell them about ours, talking about <laughs> oh birds. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Such a dumb joke. <laughs> and then... You could also leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, it helps us. It really does. Thank you. Uh, ben, where else can people find us online? Yes, you can follow us on Twitter at Talk About Birds. We're on Instagram at Talking About Birds. Our stuff is available over on TikTok. You can check us out on TikTok. Uh, the show is available to listen to on Spotify. Check us out there. Uh, and YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify or YouTube if that's your style. Uh, you can email us directly and ask Nate questions about why did he get so sick? Why does he sound like shit? What kind of tea do you drink? <laughs> so on and so forth. I think I sound good. Uh, to talk about birds 
at gmail.com. People like and the of gravel. course, you can always call us <laughs> and leave a voicemail or send us a text message to 848-48-BIRDS. That's 848-482-4737. Wow. I think the gravel, I think I might just try to keep my voice like this. Uh, I, I think that, um, yeah, you should stay sick forever <laughs> Damn. until you wither away. Damn. Do you think your family might be, uh, is it Munchausen's by proxying you? Is that what they call it? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's when when somebody wants to uh, make somebody close to them sick oh, so that they right. gain the attention and usefulness from uh, keeping them the, like, healthy, gypsy rose even though thing. they're actually keeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think your wife or chi- children are gypsy rosing you? Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. I'll just say yes. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Nate and I, uh, it's the off season, and we thought it'd be fun to do a little free agent predict- prediction game. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to just steal from MLB Trade Rumors top ranked uh, um, free agents for the off season. Uh, so that means that we're going to start with Mister Juan Soto. MLB Trade Rumors has him projected at a thirteen-year, six hundred million dollar contract. I don't know if it's going to go that high. I guess it wouldn't surprise me. But the, the real question is, who does he sign with, Nathan? Yeah, I, I'm the 600 million one. You know, I think they're obviously doing a little bit of um, Otani inflation, but Otani's deal was um, like very strange and, in, you know, include and was so high because of how much it's deferred and was like accounting for inflation and whatnot. So unless he does something similar, I would be surprised if it if it skips past like the five hundred. We've not had anyone really in the four four five hundreds until Otani went all the way, all the way to seven. But again, that was a very right. strange one. So I'd be very surprised if he gets a six hundred million dollar deal. Um, but I don't know. This all this shit is like play money at this point to these people. So um, I I. I think it's going to be the Yankees. I think they can't yeah. let this guy go. They, they've they been chasing this world. I mean, everyone's chasing a World Series, but they obviously are feeling a, a particular pressure. They just got there. They We just talked about they don't have a lot coming up in, uh, in the minors other than Jason Dominguez and maybe Spencer Jones. And it obviously worked well for them, having him and, and Aaron Judge. The Aaron Judge window is still wide open, but he is getting older. This is their best shot to keep themselves a high-end team. I think it's going to be hella expensive. I think the Yankees won't get outspent, and it certainly seems by what Juan Soto has been saying is that he wants the most money, and I, I just don't see the Yankees getting outspent here. He's 25 years old. He's 26 years old, something like that. Yeah. Um, he hasn't even really hit his prime. No, it's exactly when you want to acquire a player like this. It's unbelievable. He is he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He is on track to be, I think, one of the greatest hitters of all time. Um, his numbers compare to Mel Ott and uh, uh, so just some of the best hitters. I can't think of any <laughs> right now. Some of the best hitters of all time. Um, yeah, I, I hate to just agree with you on this first one, but I think it's going to be the Yankees. Um, I think they're the most likely. I think I saw in an interview earlier this week that a Yankees person on background said that if it just comes down to money, the Yankees will not be beat. Um, and I believe them on that. That being said, I would love for Steve Cohen, uh, the Mets to sign him. I think that that would be interesting just for the, the sake of the cross, crosstown rivalry. There's also rumors that he is meeting with the Red Sox, which I think would be a ton of fun just from a, a chaos and crying Yankees fans sure. point of view. Um, but I agree with you. I think the Yankees are probably the best. You don't think the Rays are going to go out and uh, open up the bank for him? Why even waste our time with meeting with the Rays? Yeah. The Rays can't, they don't even have a roof on their <laughs> stadium right now. They can't sign the next $500 million yeah. player. I know they always, in, they always are there in these conversations. These high dollar free agents are always meeting with the Rays. And I guess yeah. the Rays are just hoping they can, like, you know, you want to be that dude, right? Who comes to the small market team and, and brings a championship. And they're just hoping to, like, yeah. hearts and minds them over to their team, but it, it never works. Yeah, no, it does not. Um, next on the list, number two, 
is Corbin Burns, and again, MLB trade rumors, has him making, or sorry, for, signed for seven years for $200 million. Nate, where is he going to go? See, this is the one where I think he could get a little more fun with it. And yeah. I, I I get the $200 million. I do. He's He's been, he's a workhorse, hand bone. He's been one of the best pitchers in baseball. But I don't want to just go down the line listing off the top teams and just say, oh, well, it's probably the Mets. It's probably the Phillies. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little wild here, right out of the gates. I think the Twins wow. are going to push for Corbin Burns. All right. Well, any you want to uh, back that up with anything, well, or is it just a gut feeling? Here? They've been right on the precipice. They've had some good teams. They have some offensive upside, but they win with pitching. They win with pitching and defense. And why not bring him in? Seal the deal, have one of the best rotations, and hopefully Joe Ryan comes back healthy. And uh, yeah, I think the Twins would be a fun team. Maybe I'm just wish casting here a little bit that he doesn't just go to, uh, you know, the the Phillies or the Red Sox. Um, I think obviously there's a chance the Orioles pay for him and just bring him bring yeah. him back. That's probably the the smart choice. But I'm going out on a limb here, Ben. There's always some surprises, and that's what I'm going with. I like it. I think that that's a lot of fun. I like your pick a lot more than I like where I think he's going to end up. So I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Um, $200 million to the Twins. I mean, the Twins, they've played around. They've signed Carlos Correa. Mm-hmm. They've brought in uh, serious contenders in the past. Um, I am going to say, I, I said this already, and I think this is where, where they they make their mark. I think Corbin Burns is going to come back to the National League Central and I think that he is going to be the ace for your Chicago Cubs. I hate this. I hate it too. Um, but I think it makes a lot of sense. They have money to spend. They need help on pitching. They are trying to be something that's relevant. And they've clearly gone all in on the run prevention side of winning baseball yeah. with their defense. Um, and this is a guy who puts you over the top. I don't know if he's going to get seven years, um, but I think the Cubs are going to make a push for him or, or somebody like him. And, uh, we're going to hate it. Yeah. Um, I already hate it right now. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I hate you Um, for saying it. Hey, I hate me too. It has nothing to do with this conversation, (laughs) but I totally hear what you're saying. Um, but yeah, that, that is my prediction and, uh, I hope I'm wrong. Me too. All right, next person on the list is Alex Bregman. Uh, they have him uh, for seven years, $182 million. Uh, Nate, where do you think Alex Bregman is going to end up? Hmm. I haven't thought too much about Alex Bregman. I keep forgetting that he is going to be a free agent. My initial thought was he just stays with the Astros. Legacy, Yeah. you know, he... He's been good for them. Um, but I could also see this being something where maybe the Phillies jump in and they just decide to, to to lean in on this type of player and they snag Bregman. So I'm going to go Phillies. Phillies? How, is Alec Bohm gone? Bohm is such an interesting player because I I think we just saw Bohm's like best season and it's sort of a high batting average, but not much else. You know, he's got a little pop. What do you hit, like 18 home runs or something like that? Yeah. Um, and I think you can upgrade an Alec Bohm. I think you could probably keep Bohm around um, and have him maybe as a, in, a utility guy or maybe you find a trade for him. Someone would be happy with a Bohm, but I think the Phillies could upgrade there. Okay. I think that's fun. I think, I mean, I think the Philadelphia would love that. Yeah. Uh, and I think that Alex Bregman would love that and Bryce Harper would love that. I think that that would be a, a lot of fun for a lot of people. Uh, I'm going, I'm going completely opposite of, or the, let's say the other side of the country from. Wow. Me. Um, Cal Raleigh just won the platinum glove. Mm-hmm. He's the big dumper. He hits dong. <laughs> we do love that. Julio Rodriguez, one of the best players in baseball. When he's going right, Victor Robles came out of nowhere. Randy Rosarena is there uh, next year. Um, 
And, and I think the Mariners are making moves. I think the Mariners want to push in. I think they might go crazy, steal one of their division rivals, most storied players, wow. bring him in, plant him at third base. Their third base right now is a joke. Yeah, They have nobody to play third it's base. true. Plop him down right in the middle of that lineup, hitting in between Cal Raleigh and, and Julio Rodriguez, and pay the man something probably a little bit silly. Um, but I think he's going to be a Seattle Mariner. There's definitely more of a need there. I just I'm I'm having a hard time not seeing the Phillies making some sort of splash, and I and it feels like it would be offensive more than pitching, considering their offense. Although maybe it may be a reliever or two, um, but yeah, I, he obviously fits perfectly there. Yeah. Um, all right. The next person on the list, Blake Snell, has decided to throw his hat in the ring again. Um, MLB trade rumor says that he's going to get five years, one hundred sixty million dollars. That is very different from what he did last yeah. year. Um, but he ended up having a really solid year, especially that that stretch towards the end of the season. And I, I think we're all uh, in baseball land. We are now at the point where we know what Blake Snell is. He's a very good pitcher. He walks guys, but in six innings, there's there's almost nobody better than him yeah. on, on a 75% night basis. Uh, so he's a big deal. Nate, where is Blake Snell going to land? Yeah. Yeah. Um... This is a tough one. I it he he kind of he did kind of prove himself. Like this is what you're pot paying. He obviously thinks he can make more. Um, I want to say the Astros are going to go oh, out. No, I hate. This. I know the Astros. They don't like where they're at. They yeah. need pitching. They like that type of guy. They love the strikeout pitcher. We've seen them yep. go after that over and over and over. Garrett Cole. Justin Verlander, et cetera. I think it's going to be the Astros. Yeah. I, uh, whew, I, I, I just don't like the Astros, anything right. good happening to the Astros. So that's why I just initially hurt. Of course. Uh, when you said that, um, I'm going to go a different direction again. I'm going with the New York Mets. I think the yeah. New York Mets are going to spend some money this year. Um, I think obviously Kodai Senga is kind of a big question mark right now. Um, and their starting rotation just looks soft. They, they don't really have anyone to be super excited about. Um, and they're, they're losing a couple of guys to free agency. So I think, you know, Steve Cohen has unlimited money. He's got that hack where you just make money into more money yep. and, or, you know, whether you're stealing it or whatever the hell he's doing. Um, and obviously the team impressed last year, they, they have Mark Vientos, they have Francisco Lindor. The team made it really far. I think they're only going to improve themselves. Yep. So I think he's going to the Mets and I think he's going to get a lot of money, um, and and good for him, I suppose. Yeah, Mets are going to be a player in this. All, like this is the first that we've said a Mets uh, person or uh, someone going to the Mets. Um, but uh, I, uh, it might be like three guys on this list. Well, here's a, another one that I think uh, could could make a lot of sense for the Mets, uh, depending on which way they go. Willie Adamas, uh, former Milwaukee Brewer, they are saying that he's going to get six years, one hundred and sixty million. Nate, where is he going? Dodgers. Dodgers. Yep. Man, really? Yeah. We're gonna. Is he gonna play third? Yep. Or short? I think he'll play third for the Dodgers, and maybe some short. Yeah, but of course they have. Uh, uh, future Hall of Famer Tommy Edmond, who may uh, play some short also. Yeah. Um, and they're already saying Mookie's going to play second. Yeah. Um, so the Dodgers are going to do that. Wow. Um, the Dodgers are going they to, they're going to, if they don't get soda, soda? No, I don't think so. Um, and I don't think they need to go and get soda. They just won the World Series and it wasn't even close. I know. So, uh, yeah, I think, but they're not going to not spend money. They're not going to yeah. not improve the team. It's what they Just do. sit around. Uh, yeah. I uh, I don't think you're totally wrong on that. I am going to go with the Giants mm. uh, on this. The Giants have been trying to land their guy. Yeah. I think they had an all right offseason last year. Um, but the reason I'm saying this is because Buster Posey came out and said, we need a cornerstone, cornerstone shortstop going forward. I think Buster Posey's a, a getting the deal done type wow. of GM. Wow. I guess we're going to see. Um, and guess who's the best shortstop on the market? That's Willie Adamas. I think they're going to go pay the kid. Um, and I think he's going to be a giant for a long time. 
Um, I think it makes a lot of it sense. It does feel like a giant's move. He seems like a giant. Um, yeah, and I don't know. He's you know he's a good defender. He had a he had a nice power year. He's kind of you know he's a good player. I, I don't know if he's I, like 160 million feels crazy, but he is a good player. He's a good player. I have been a little surprised at the valuation he's been getting, and I do suspect yeah. that this could end up being one of those contracts that whoever pays him that much is not necessarily going to be the most happy about it. And if he goes to a big ballpark like the Giants ballpark, I do wonder what does he look like if he hits 21 home runs in a year, you know. But he is a good defender. He is a good defender. And that that goes a long way in a ballpark like yeah. where the Giants play. It's true. And and Buster Posey called his shot. Yeah. Um uh, so we'll see. That's important. All right, we got a couple more we'll talk about. Max Fried, uh he is uh they're saying he's going to make 6 years, 156 million dollars. Nate, where do you think Max Fried is going to go? This is where the Mets are coming in. They're stacking into the rotation. They're paying whatever it costs. They've been getting beat by this guy. They're going to stick it to the Braves, and they're going to buy Max Fried. Wow. Um, I can see that. Uh, I, I can see Max Fried. I think this is this is going to be a really hard one. Like <laughs> I could see the, the Tigers going yeah. out. And trying to get a Max Freed, trying to trying to leapfrog a little bit. I could see the Astros going and get a Max Freed. I could see so many teams, yeah. I think, make sense. Because he's not going to be as expensive as Corbin Burns, but he's really, yeah. really good. Um, so I don't I don't know who. May, you know what? I'll, I'll be a little more. I'll have a little more fun with this. Um, trying to trying to trying to game the system a little bit. I'm going to stick with my Tigers pick. I, okay. I think that the Tigers are going to go get a guy and and baseball is back in the D. Wow. Nate. I'm calling it. Yeah, I think this could be similar, like the Twins also, you know, in that same yeah. sort of vein of like some team who doesn't normally spin big but does every once in a while will we'll pick him um, to sort of come in and, and center their rotation. Um, Next on the list is Pete Alonso. You're saying he's going to get five years, one twenty-five. He's a big, strong guy, Ben. And there's there's a uh, there's a, a dark horse we haven't talked about yet. There's there's a looming presence we haven't talked about. What team more than any other team loves to come in and buy a guy past their prime for way too much money? That's right. Uh, he's going to become an angel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you think so. he's going to hit twenty-three home runs for them? every year and he will just continue their legacy of albatross contracts weighing them down wow that's my prediction you don't think you don't think that's that's your, really your prediction <laughs> put it on the board <laughs> all right i'm putting it on the board um all right i was gonna what noah shane well i mean they got they got guys over there uh they they like the stars over there they're always you know he's the home run they they, they pay for celebrity Okay. He's the home run. He's a celebrity. He's the home run derby uh, winner. Yeah. He's he's gonna fit perfectly. Man, I did not expect you to say that. I really hope that that is not the case. Um, I'm I'm gonna say uh, Diamondbacks. Okay. I think he's gonna be an Arizona Diamondback. Is he Christian DH? Walker. Christian Walker is a free agent. Oh, their, right, right, their right. Their first right. base is open right, right, right now. Right. He'd go down there, hit a hundred bombs a year yeah. in that thin mountain air, uh, desert air. Sorry. Um. I think that you know they're they're a real team. I think that he will not get 125 million dollars. I think it'll be less than that, um, and I think they're gonna they're gonna try to capitalize. And he is going to be their their old veteran on a young team yeah. of of solid players. Um, and again, like I said, him hitting home runs in there 80 games a year is, would be a lot of fun. That would be fun. Yeah, um, but it's gonna be he's gonna be an angel. All right, uh, I am try. I am writing all these down, so we will uh, we will follow up on this at some point. All right, Nate, I got two more on the list, and the last one's kind of a joke. Jack Flaherty is the second to last one. He is projected to get five years, one hundred and fifteen million smackers. What do you say? Yeah, he's going to get the bag, and I think he's going to be a Dodger. I, I think that yeah. it, it just makes sense. You know, he just won a World Series with them. He had an excellent season. He's always been an LA guy. Um, there, you know, there's so much narrative they can tie to this. They can bring him, you know, bring him back, bring him home. It's not gonna for the for the Dodgers. They they like trip and that much money spills out of their pockets. 
So I, I don't. I'd be very surprised if he goes anywhere else. Damn. Yeah, I I agree with you, but just for the sake of this game, I'm going to disagree with you. Um, it's kind of the heart gonna, of the show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say. Oh, I don't want to predict the Cubs again, but I do kind of think the Cubs would make a lot of sense for Jay Flair. Um, I'm going to say that he is going to be a Houston Astro okay. um, for all those strikeouty reasons. They're, they're trying to stay relevant and stick around. Uh, and we know that they'll pay a guy. Yeah. All right. Uh, last one on the list. And we kind of talked about this already. So I think I already know your answer. Um, he is not ranked. Uh, at, at this level. And actually I got to, if you give me one second, I got to find where he's ranked on, uh, but I want to talk about Paul Goldschmidt. Um, he is. Yeah. Oh, uh, geez. He is projected to get one year, $15 million. Uh, he's the 35th best uh, free agent, according to MLB trade rumors. Where do you think he's going to go? Nate? I think I already know your yeah, answer. We already talked about this. I think he'll be a Yankee. Yeah, I uh, I kind of agree with you. I, I think that that's highly likely. Um, and I, I uh, if I didn't make my Pete Alonso prediction, I would probably say the. That's what I was gonna say. I did forget that Christian Walker was a free agent, so you could totally yeah. see the Diamondbacks bringing him home, hoping that he's gonna wear a Diamondback hat in his Hall of Fame plaque and yeah. let him finish his career there on a team that is better than the Cardinals, and he'd have a real shot at competing again in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I am going to go with, oh, this is a tough one. There's a lot of teams that would make sense. I'm trying to think Yankees. I mean, I think, I think Yankees make the most sense. I, I could see the Diamondbacks. I could see the Astros. I could see the Reds bringing him in. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going to I'm going to be a little bit of a chaos agent. I'm going to say he's going to go to the Reds. Wow. Um Terry Francona coming in there. Uh he's going to teach all the young guys how to run the bases properly and and do play baseball right. All that stuff. Um but yeah, I'm going to go there. I'll go uh I don't I won't recap it cuz that'll take too long, but we'll revisit this at uh Yeah. uh later in the off season when all these guys start signing. But uh that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, should be. That's a. I mean, this is a big off season, not for the Cardinals, it but it's a big off season for baseball. For for other teams, yeah, who like to win. Yep. Well, we like to win. Yeah, just not ready to commit to it. Right. Um. All right. That's all I got for you, Nady. All right. We got a little bit of league news. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh. So the Angels. We had a free agent signing, which was exciting. Uh. The Angels have announced that they have signed catcher Travis Darno to a two-year deal worth twelve million bucks. Um. Why? You know, who knows why? Why? Why are? Why is the sky blue? The, you know. Um, well, you pair this with Pete Alonso. Yeah. And you're good. You got it. It is funny. It's done. They're, they're done. They. It's wow. It's interesting. I mean, they have a great starting cut. One of their. One of their. You know, few spot bright spots is Logan O'Hoppy, who is a, um, a a really good catcher. So uh, I, I guess they just wanted to lock in that backup catcher. You got to get him in the house. Two year deal, lock him in. Darno's good. So you know they're improving the team. Ben, what 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 else do you want from them? They're improving the team. I forgot that they traded for Jorge Soler um, in a weird deal. I also forgot about that. Yeah, so they have they're gonna hit some, Mike Trout. It's a good place to start. They're going to hit some bombs out there. Yeah. Um, Mike Trout. Yeah, weird team. Great place to start. Ray, Rendon might uh, be a baseball player. Soon. Yeah, well, I saw a, uh, a headline with them, and they were saying that, like, you know, they're, they're treating him like he has to earn a spot on the team, uh, which is the good. right way to do it. Yeah, they should. Um, probably the biggest baseball news of this week is uh, is this little piece of news right here. Uh, the Chiba Latte Mariners, oh, sorry, Marines, are going to post Roki Sasaki for MLB clubs. Uh, MLB is going to classify him as a foreign league player before the age of 25, meaning that he can only sign a minor league contract and therefore is subject to hard capped bonus limit. Um, I think I read that the team that has the most money to sign him, it's it's only about like five million bucks or something like that. Um so basically open season for arguably one of the best players 
in baseball. Um, he is getting comparisons to any number of ace level pitchers. Um, and he's going to be at a price point that makes sense for literally every ball club. Yeah. It is is an Otani situation. Who does he want to be with? Um, but huge news coming out of Japanese baseball. Yeah, of course it is the Dodgers who have the highest amount of available international pool money right now. But it is not a extremely larger number than a whole bunch of other teams. And this is a resource that you can trade. So we may see some early offseason mo- uh, moving here as teams try to position themselves to have the most international uh, pool money. But it is all in the matter of generally the difference between these teams are in the hundreds of thousands, which obviously to the rest of us is a ton of money. But in, in this sort of thing, it's really not anything. So it will be which team can appeal to him the the most, I am, I imagine. Um, I've heard both that he would love to play with a major league or the, or the major market team. I've also heard that he might be the type of guy kind of like an Otani who doesn't necessarily want the spotlight right out of the gates. And so he may end up signing with a middle market team. Uh, it's going to be very interesting and whoever gets him, it is going to be a real win. This dude is legit 23 years old. Those 100 miles per hour might come into the league as the best pitcher in the league. Uh, there's usually an adjustment period for these dudes, but he's got it. He is he is it, and it's going to be really interesting. I I, uh, I wish the Cardinals I had wish, a shot. <laughs> I mean, they do. They I, do. I know. They all. Every team has a shot. They do. I know. But um, every team has a shot. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I think the Cardinals are going to go make a play for him and and all that. Um, but man, it would be really cool if they did. Yeah. It'd be cool if any team did. It'd be really cool if he goes to a team that is not the Dodgers. Yes. Um, just for the sake of, of baseball. Um, yeah, I, I was reading the other day that Eric Longenhagen says that he has the best splitter on the planet right now. And that's the um, pitch that everyone is trying to throw right now. And like you said, the kid, he's he's been clocked at 102. He's a starting pitcher. He's young. He's had some health issues. Um, but you'll take that gamble all yeah. day, especially um, on a minor league contract. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's wild. Especially, this is yeah, this is exactly what you want as a baseball team. So exactly what you want. It's a really low risk, really high reward <laughs> yeah. play, and all thirty teams are likely involved in it. This could come down to does Heim Bloom or X other front office person have a good PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> And is Roki Sasaki feeling it? Yeah. Um, Because that's, you know, you talk about how Shohei signed with the Angels, and he basically just said he had a gut feeling and decided to pull the trigger. He didn't really, and and I'm not saying Roki Sasaki and Shohei Otani are the same person, but I think, you know, when when you learn about the mentality of somebody who would rather come to the major leagues now rather than wait two years and make the kind of bag that Yoshinobu Yamamoto just made, this off, last off season, I think that tells you a lot about the player. Yeah. And I think it also tells you that he's kind of unpredictable. Yeah. So he's going to be looking for the right situation for him and a situation where he can develop, turn into a superstar and then go make, you know, 800 kajillion dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we shall see, yeah. but it's uh, fun. I mean, it's, it's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, this, you know, after Soto, this is going to be the story of the offseason, yeah, I think. I think so. All right. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about for league news Tropicana Field will not be ready for the Rays until 2026, according to a dam- damage assessment report that came out earlier this week. It's going to cost about 55 million bucks. Will not be ready. So, where do the Rays play in 2025? Huge question mark. I don't know how you play in South Florida. Or uh, I guess that's kind of what, like uh, Western Florida, whatever, without a roof. Um, There's obviously minor league ballparks all over the place. So they moved to Miami. I I don't know what the move is here. Um, It's a really weird situation. But the Rays are not going to have a place to play, uh, at least right now, until next year. Yeah. Until, sorry, 2026. Yeah, it's a bummer. I mean, not that Tropicana Field was anything really to write home about, but still, like... 
It was a ballpark. Yeah, yeah. You, I feel bad for the Rays. They can't catch a break. Um, hopefully they get this figured out. Um, but maybe this is step one in the Rays making a more permanent move anyway. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I am uh, hopeful, but I don't feel confident. Yeah. Um, all right, that's all I got for league news this week, Nate. All right, man, I got a new game for you. I'm calling it, what year is it? Oh, did you hear my voice crack? <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so the last 10 years for the St. Louis Cardinals have been a mixture of success and failure, uh, starting from the season, the 25th, this starting from 2015 to 2024, we've had NLCS runs and we've had, uh, multiple years missing the playoffs. I have a handful of stats. I'm going to, I'm going to have you guess which year the Cardinals achieved these. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to be terrible at this. I do expect this to be hard, but I think it's kind of fun. All right. All right. In what year do the Cardinals have their lowest team ERA? You have 2015 through 2024. Lowest team ERA, 2015 through 2023. 2015 was the um, John Lackey, Jason Hayward year. The pitching that year was... Very good. Um, I think Waka gave you a really good year. Carmar may have given you a really good year. Um, obviously, the defense was solid that year. I think I want to go 2015 right off the bat. Let's go. Ben, you got the first one right. They had a Let's team go. ERA of 2.94. Yeah. That team was, I think, it won 100 games. It did. That team was great. Yeah, that was the uh, Cardinals 100 I believe is the Pirates ninety nine and Cubs ninety eight win. It might yeah. have been might have flipped the Cubs and the Pirates, um, and then the Car- Cardinals got bounced by the Cubs in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. What year did they have the highest ERA? Um, <laughs> felt like last year. Um, but you said it ends at twenty twenty two. No twenty. This goes all the way up until this most last twenty twenty four. It felt like last year, um, but that might not be true. Um, Probably some worse years in there. Uh, but this game is impossible, so I'm just going to say 2024. Close. It was 2023. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I, Actually, that makes sense because we were like, oh, my God, we have to bring in yeah. Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson to write the ship. So, yeah, yeah of course. That, okay, yeah. Duh. Uh, bonus points if you can guess what the team ERA was in 2023. Uh Four seven six, <laughs> dude. Four seven nine. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> let's go. All right. What year did they hit the most home runs? What year did they hit the most home runs? Okay. Um. Yikes. Let's see. Well, I want to say probably the year that Goldie and Arenado went off, but it, that makes me think I'm forgetting a year in the early or the late. Uh, 2010s, but again, this is impossible. Oh, wait, was that the year that also Pujols went off? Yeah, it was, right? Yeah, because they were all they were all banging them. So I think, was that 2022? 20, was that the year that Goldie and Arenado and Goldie? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I'm going to say 2022. I think that's right. While that is one of the higher higher ones, it was actually 2019. 19. They hit 210 home runs. Okay. Who do you have? Who was who was leading? Um, I certainly can get that. Interestingly, though, who was ben, doing the most banging last year? The Cardinals hit 209. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, Paul Goldschmidt hit 34. Uh, DeYoung hit 30. Ozuna hit 29. Uh, I don't remember that. Fowler hit 19. Uh, Jose Martinez hit 10. Edmund hit 11. Matt Wieters hit 11. Just total team effort here. Yeah. I remember Matt Wieters. Yeah. That was all right. Yeah. That was a thing. Yep. All right. How about highest OPS? Highest <sighs> OPS. This is, came, is impossible. I know. Um... 
I, I don't know. I have to lean back on my previous thought process. I'm going to go the uh, the MV3 of Arenado, Goldian, and Pujols and say 2022 again. Nope, 2016. Damn. 16. Yeah. The Cardinals had a 7. Matt Holiday. 767 OPS. Carpenter. They, who else? Um, Digging in here a little bit, it looks like, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Oledmiz Diaz. Had an eight seventy nine. Damn, uh, Piscotti. I, remember. I was there. Yeah, Piscotti had an eight hundred, over five hundred and eighty two at bats. Yachty seven eighty seven. Just a lot of guys right around eight hundred. Yeah, that's hard to do. Yep, baseball hard. Brandon Moss on that team. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I was there. Here's a fun one. Nearly impossible, I know, but fun to look at. Most errors committed. Most errors committed. Um, just going off narrative alone, I remember that being a huge conversation at the end of Matheny's tenure, and then Schilte coming in, and and you know that that at least being part of the conversation mm-hmm. of that being cleaned up. I cannot remember air stats though, so I'm going to say that I think. Matheny's last year was 2017. I'm going to say that was the sloppy year. 2017. You're close. 2018 was Damn. the year that they committed the most errors. I have to look up when Matheny was fired. Okay. Um, I think I'm close. I think, it's right around yeah. there. Yeah. Um, well... He was fired in 2022 from the from the Royals. So hold yeah. on, when you just write, we all remember. When you that. just write, Matheny fired. He was fired. <laughs> a lot of things come up. So you your thought process was exactly right. You just got the wrong year. Um, he was fired oh, in damn. the middle of the season of 2018. Okay. All right. So uh, well, I was okay. I'll yeah, give you a right, bonus enough, point because you're you had the right idea this wrong year. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You can cash these points in at the talking about bird store. Uh, Perfect. They had 133 errors. Wow. Um, Matt Carpenter and Jed Jerko both had 16. And Yairo Munoz, remember him? Walked off Is the he job. Still around? Is, yeah. Yeah. He had 18. Is he okay? I don't know. He somehow got another j- gig after l- just abandoning the Cardinals. Yeah. I wish I could abandon this podcast <laughs> and get a different podcast. I get it. Uh, Daniel would probably take you. <laughs> I don't think he would. <laughs> Uh, all right, I got two little quick ones for you. How many times did the Cardinals win the Central in the last 10 years? Oh, shoot. Uh, this feels like one I should actually know, and I do not have that off the top of my head. I'm going to say Central. Uh, I'm going to say six times. That feels about right to me. You must be thinking how many times they've made the playoffs because they've only won the uh, NL Central three times in the last 10 years. <sighs> Um, okay. They won it in 20... Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right, yeah. Uh, let's see. They won it in 2015, 2019, and 2022. All right. Damn. Yep. Um, and they... I'll just give you the last one. They came in second four times. And most of these were also a playoff berth. Uh, 2016, not a playoffs. Uh, 2020, yes, playoffs. 2021, yes, playoffs. And 2024. Right. So, All right. Uh, so there you go. That is, wow. what year is it? It's been an interesting 10 years. Hopefully the next 10 are better, though a lot of teams would kill for an NLCS, uh, five playoff berths, and three division championships in a, in a 10-year period. So Yeah, I know. It is so fun. Like, we talked about that. Even with complaining about Mo and all this stuff that's come out, it's like, it still hasn't been that no. bad. Other teams are ran a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the team's not even going to be that worst team in baseball next year. They're not even going to be close to the worst no. team in baseball. Um, yeah, it's funny, There's percentile but, uh, outcomes where the Cardinals are good next year. That's not the yeah. case for uh, several teams in baseball. Right. Yeah. 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 We, we, it, is, it is fun to complain. Yeah, though. of course. Um, all right. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all for joining, as always, making it all the way through and uh, listening to my gravelly voice i made it wow i sound as bad as i did at the beginning yeah great job thank you um and we'll be back next week as always 
you have a topic or something you want us to discuss, a question, whatever it may be, text or leave us a voicemail at 848-48-BIRDS. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash talking about birds. And until next week, I'm just going to go with a good old fashioned, let's go Cardinals. Get me Roki Sasaki. <laughs>